Uh, I think we can start it. Okay. And uh, I first, I, I need to introduce uh, Professor Zhi uh, Yuan Liu. And Professor Liu is a current professor and a vice dean in the School of the Transportation at the Southeast University, Nanjing, China. And he received his PhD degree from the National University of Singapore. From 2012 to 2015, he was a lecturer in the Monarch University of Australia. In 2018, he was a visiting scholar in the School of Mathematics and Statistics at University of Melbourne. His research interests include transport, transportation data analysis, transportation network modeling, public transportation, intelligence transportation system. In these areas, he has published more than 100 papers in top journals. He's an associate editor of IET Intelligence Transportation System and ASC Journal of the Transportation Engineer, and also serves the editorial board of three international journals, including Transportation Research Part E, Transportation Research Record of Journal of Transportation and Land and Use. Welcome, Professor Liu. It's your turn. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, good morning. Well, I shall thank Professor Drew for the invitation. It's a big pleasure for me to share with you about this topic. Uh, as you can see from the slide, that the uh, topic today has two keywords. Uh, one is a uh, transport simulation. The other one is, is a reinforcement learning. So I assume there's an audience here today are uh, experts in RL, reinforcement learning. So my talk today will not focus on the models and algorithm, but mostly uh, will be on the uh, domain knowledge and the problem itself. So <clears throat> uh, Professor Zhu has just introduced my uh, CV. Well, here actually is my itinerary. I get my PhD from Singapore and uh, come to, to Melbourne and then come back to Nanjing. So if you are interested for overseas study or uh, exchange experience in this in Singapore or Melbourne, you can contact me. Well, my research area includes these four different topics. Uh, Professor Zhu has mentioned. I actually start the collaboration with DD since 2015, uh, already six years. I have finished already several projects with DD. So since the collaboration with DD, I have been asked mostly about one question. What is the domain knowledge in transportation area? So. Today, the talk, will, uh, I will first introduce about the tasks and domain knowledge in the transport uh, system analysis. Well, the main task in urban transport system modeling, actually a very important issue is uh, to estimate and predict the traffic volume and the travel time. So if we use this V to denote the traffic volume, actually uh, tra travel time is denoted by T, actually time is a function of V. A very well-known function form is a BPR function. So a uh, number one decision variable in the transport system analysis is in fact the traffic volume because we have many functions to calculate other terms if we, we can have the traffic volume. When I collaborate with the digital map department in DD, they always, well, so the colleagues in, in DD always discussed about the travel speed uh, the, the reason is because travel speed is very good representative for the traveler's driving experience. It gives you an impression about the congestion level of the link. But actually we have this function form, which is a fundamental diagram. So if we, we can have the volume, then we can calculate the density and then we can calculate the speed. So as long as we can get the traffic volume, we can get all the 
uh, other related terms in the transform system analysis. And also in transport system analysis, especially for the urban tra uh, transport problems, we need to measure the performance of several different indexes. One very important issue is to measure the performance of the uh, uh, of the links, uh, network links in a particular segment. In transportation engineering, the index we use to measure the performance is known as VC ratio, which is a ratio between the volume uh, divided by, uh, by, by the capacity. So capacity is given as long as the network is planned, is constructed. So when the so, so only unknown term here is actually also the volume. So as I said, volume is the number one important decision variable in the transport system analysis. That is a domain knowledge we uh, talk about. And another very important index is to measure, to uh, assess uh, the overall performance of the transport network, especially when we plan a new transport network, this one. And many of the links does not really exist in the current uh, situation. So how to estimate the performance of the whole network? We use this index to measure the system optimum, which is the overall performance of the network. It is the overall travel time. So it equals the uh, overall travel time of every link, which is a uh, volume times the, the travel time. So again, you can see that there's only one decision variable, which is the volume. As long as we can have the volume, then we can have the we can we can measure the performance of the overall network. So in the past, uh, the uh, the history of transport engineering, this discipline has uh, about one hundred years. So in this one hundred years, we basically have two different times types of methods to measure the uh, traffic volume and the performance of the network. The first type of method is analytical models. And second type is a simulation method. So for analytical model, a very well-known method is four-step model. So as long as we talk about the domain knowledge in transport engineering, we should know about this uh, four-step mo model. Four-step model actually includes uh, literally four different steps, uh, which are trip generation, trip distribution, model split, and the traffic assignment. But trip generation actually is a if you divide the whole urban network into different units, uh, when each unit is a particular district. So trip generation measures the overall demand or the trips generated by one unit. So all the trips originating from this one unit and also all the trips that are coming into one unit. So that's trip generation. And trip distribution is that in the whole network, you have tens of units, maybe hundreds of, of units, so we call it uh, zones, okay? So trip generation gives us the demand between each two particular zones, so this distribution, okay? And the third term model stability actually between each two zones, if we know the overall travel demand, so what are the demand for a particular travel mode? So between zone I and zone J, say that there are totally 1,000 trips. So how many of these 1,000 are traveling, will be travel, uh, will, will travel by, by driving or by public transport or by bicycle? So this model split, uh, uh, split the overall travel demand into different, different modes. And the last part is very important, uh, which is basically the uh, overall outcome of the four stem model, which is traffic assignment. So if we know that between zone I and zone J, totally there are 200 people driving. So in a, uh, which route they will choose? And in a particular link, how many travelers, or how many cars will, will be using this particular link? So this four stem model, I think it's also number one, uh, some kind of very important domain knowledge in transportation area. Four step is not only a model, but four different research themes. Okay, so analytical model basically use uh, uh, economics models to analyze about these research themes 
and it gives us the closed form solution. The good side of FOSA model is that it can provide a very uh, concise closed form solution, but the limitation of the analytical model and also the four step model is that it has so many strong assumptions. For example, it assumes that all the users will choose the shortest path, which is not always true in practice. So because of these strong assumptions, it makes the final solution also problematic. Uh, uh, it, it has certain limitations. So how to deal with this kind of strong assumption? We use a simulation method. So today the focus, uh, why I'm talking about simula uh, simulation is because simulation is very good extension for the existing uh, analytical models, which cannot capture the very complicated circumstances. And another reason is that simulation is a very important platform for reinforcement learning. Okay, so let's first uh, talk about the domain knowledge, uh, the, the history of tra traffic simulation. So if we go back to the history of traffic simulation, I can see a very clear uh, generation, the trend of the development uh, simulation. I can divide the, all the different uh, traffic simulation tools into three different generations. So these are the names of the three different generations. And the last generation, I call it uh, the, the generation uh, 4.0, which is a target of our new research. Why we are using reinforcement learning? Because we want to extend the current simulation uh, to a, a new generation, uh, which it can combine the AI and big data, and of course, uh, reinforce, reinforcement learning. So these are the four generation. Let's talk about uh, the, the trend of these traffic simulation software. The first one is a macroscopic static model. It can date back to the 1980s. So the static model or macroscopic models are not really a simulation. They are actually the cl closed form models. So they use the economics or operation research mathematics models to calculate the estimated traffic volume on a particular link, and then use some kind of visualization to show the outcomes of the mathematical model. So that's, that's a, uh, the, the idea behind the first generation of uh, traffic simulation. We have many uh, already uh, very mature uh, software packages including Trascad, Cube, Emmy. So what are the drawbacks and the limitation of the traffic simulation 1.0? Is that because I, I mentioned they are using some kind of closed form models. So for all kinds of closed form solution, you need to make some very, very strong assumptions, uh, assuming shortest pass, assuming that the travel impedance only includes travel time. So, uh, so on and so forth. All these kind of assumption makes the, the uh, analysis, make, makes the model uh, kind of distant from the reality. And another drawback is that it has low flexibility. So on a particular link, it can only output the traffic volume and it cannot show us the operation of the traffic, uh, traffic movement. So in 1990s, uh, the so second generation of traffic simulation is developed, uh, which is uh, known as a microscopic traffic simulation. A very good representative is a VSIM. VSIM is already quite, quite powerful, and I think it's the uh, most widely used traffic simulation software uh, in the academia, academia and also practice. So for the microscopic traffic simulation, the Married, uh, the good side is that you can see the movement of every particular vehicle. So it follows some kind of physical laws uh, and also uh, the, some, some, some kind of uh, psychological consideration to describe the movement of each particular vehicle. So the good side is that you can see the very clear uh, operation about the uh, traffic traffic flows. But the limitation is that because it, it, it has, uh, it operates the movement of every vehicle. So the computational cost is very high. 
And because of high computational cost, it cannot really analyze a big study area. Usually for traffic simulation, the study area is only one, either one particular intersection or a particular district in the urban city. We cannot really handle the uh, microscopic traffic simulation for the overall uh, urban area. But for transport planning, we need to study the overall uh, urban area. So this limitation of traffic simulation makes it very uh, difficult to use for transport planning. And another drawback or limitation is that it cannot capture the activity-based trip change. Because of this, the third generation of traffic simulation is developed, which is known as a activity-based simulation. So another domain knowledge here I would like to share with you is what is activity-based modeling. It is a main idea behind the third generation of traffic simulation. The idea behind activity, or it has another name, which is a trip chain. The idea behind it is that actually every OD in urban area is not isolated. For example, in the morning, we travel from home to our workplace. But this, this first trip is always connected with our next trip. So after we finish our work, we need to travel from our workplace back to home. Or during this trip, we need to do some other activities. We need to go to the supermarket for shopping. Uh, we need to go to the childcare to, to take our children, okay? So all this kind of activity makes our trips in a day connected. So we need to consider about this kind of connection of our trips. This is the idea behind it, uh, the traffic simulation 3.0, a very uh, widely adopted software for the activity-based simulation is MetaSim. MetaSim is developed basically in the beginning of the new century. And uh, it has uh, many uh, advanced models in, in it. For example, it considers about the utility models and discrete choice models. So it's all, 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 all kinds of advanced economics models are adopted and used in the traffic simulation 3.0. Okay, so what are the limitations? Because today we are facing the new generation, so we need to clear, clearly understand and summarize about the limitation of the existing software and the previous generation. So the drawback is that, again, it has a very high computation burden because it needs to mirror the utility function and the movement, which is a, a trip chain, the trip chain, sorry, the demand uh, of every particular user in the urban network. So for a mega city like Beijing, it has tens of millions of people traveling in a particular day. So if we develop a, a model for each particular people, the so computational burden is very high. Another limitation is that, for example, MetaSim is link impedance function. It has low accuracy. It basically assumes a queuing model to measure the overall performance. But if we want to know the dynamic operation of a particular link, we need to use some, something like the car following model, uh, like the, same, uh, the models that, that we are using in, in microscopic traffic simulation. So that's a limitation of the third generation. And another thing which is a re, uh, regarded, regarded as a limitation for our research is that it's not compatible with AI and big data APIs. For example, TensorFlow is not that ready to be used in MetaSim in DTA line. So, okay, we talk about the limitations and then it comes to our research targets, which is a new generation of traffic simulation. We call it traffic simulation 4.0, which is termed as a multi-model agent-based traffic simulation. So what are our, our objectives and what are uh, these object, objectives are the merits of the traffic simulation 4.0. So number one, very important is that the new generation of traffic simulation should combine the advantages of versions one, two, three. That means we should combine the advantage of macro simulation and micro simulation, which is very important. Well, we divide 
the function of different software into microscopy and macroscopy, not because it's necessary, but it's because our resources are limited. Uh, limited. Our computational power are limited. So we have to divide it into different, different level. But here, based on the uh, computational power of uh, a workstation or, 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 or a platform, we have enough power resources to combine the macroscopic and the microscopic. So the four, traffic simulation 4.0 should have this kind of function. Another thing is that it should integrate multimodal traffic simulation. Where in the urban area, we have so many different travel modes and the uh, feature of urban traffic modeling is that all these different travel modes are actually connected together. One small change in a particular mode will affect all the other travel modes, okay? So integration is very important. I will talk about the details later. Another thing is that we need to combine the still art algorithm in AI. For example, it should be able to accommodate the existing algorithms and uh, libraries in, 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 a, in a API like TensorFlow, but existing uh, traffic simulation software packages one, two, three are not able to do that. So the new generation should have the support from this kind of existing existing APIs. It should be able to uh, combine big data, machine learning, deep learning, and of course, reinforcement learning. Okay. The last one is that it should be able to handle the frontier travel and transport technology, especially for CAV and uh, cooperative vehicle infrastructure system, V2I, V2, V2X, or this kind of new technology. Okay, we talk about the target and why we are doing this kind of new uh, simulation simulation software. And then it comes to a, a very important part of today's talk, how to combine the traffic simulation with reinforcement learning or why we need reinforcement learning. Why not using other kind of machine learning or AI technology, why reinforcement learning? Okay, here is a main part of my presentation. As I said that in urban area, it's very complicated system. It's connected together, all kind of different ingredients. So we can summarize the urban transport system as a nonlinear, highly complex mega system. We have many different travel modes. So before the sharing mobility, basically in the urban area, we have five or six different travel modes, uh, either driving, bus, subway, taxi, okay, those kind of travel modes. So after the sharing mobility, we have red sourcing, we have shared bikes. So it becomes maybe 20 or 30 different travel modes in the urban area. And no mention about the combination of different trips, a travel mode like park and ride. So the first half you, you drive and the second half you, you ride, uh, you, you take the public transport. So all these kind of complicated travel modes are combined together and makes the analysis of travel operation in urban area. Even if we only analyze about the right sourcing, we need to consider about all the other uh, different types of complicated travel modes. So how to deal with that? Uh, we are confronted by many challenges, which is a uh, low efficiency, severe congestion, and high vehicle emissions in urban area. Uh, very key limitation here is because different travel modes is lack of coordination. So how to deal with that? We need to develop a new technology, a, a new software, a simulation software with a multimodal integration. Uh, integration. And in this new software, we need to use the big data and the AI technology. So this is our target. And it is the features of the traffic simulation 4.0. We are facing a highly complex environment and the process. And we want to use big data and AI technology. And we need to combine the advanced modeling uh, features of agent-based simulation 
into consideration. So all these ingredients I mentioned, uh, including the multi-agent, including big data, including AI, actually indicate a very clear pathway to us, which is reinforcement learning. Okay, so that's the reason why we need to use RL. A lot of AI experts and computer scientists ask me that what has a, uh, what, what has a case, uh, as real cases for reinforcement learning. So we develop, developed a very sophisticated reinforcement learning model. So how to use it? In what particular situation we need RL? So I can tell you that for our urban transport simulation, all the integrated analysis, integrated modeling of urban system, transport system study, we need RL uh, because of these ingredients. They all point to RL. So we know that many uh, RL models are already well developed in the in, in some transport area, for example, traffic simulation. The advantage of RL is because it has this very friendly uh, framework that it defines the agents and then lets the agent directly contact with the environment. So it give a, it can accommodate the uh, highly complex in, uh, environmental factors in, into consideration. So that is an advantage of RL. So if we use that in the uh, analysis, in the analysis of traffic simulation, the advantage of RL is very clear. I summarized several merits of the RL and uh, we talk about this uh, one by one. So the first thing is that RL compared with the existing modeling uh, method, modeling framework. For example, in if we dig back to the 1960s, we have the four step model, which is uh, economics models for the transport system analysis. Basically, they are operation research models. They are uh, programming, uh, mathematical programming. Okay, so compare with those kind of models, what has the advantage? clear advantage of RL. So number one important uh, issue is that it has fewer assumptions and more accurate perception of the environment. That is very important. So for previous models, we need to define every factor in the environment. We need to define the travel impedance, the uh, uh, level of congestion, uh, all these different kinds of environments, which is very hard to clearly uh, uh, capture. So if we have some kind of strong assumption in the model itself, then it will give gives us a, a, a problematic outcome. So the good side of RL is that we don't need this kind of assumption. We directly define the agent and put it in, into the environment. For example, if we want to train an autonomous he helicopter, traditional method is that we model the complex environment that is a helicopter will meet in the air. But for RL, we only need to define the agent, uh, the, the function of this, this agent, and then we let the helicopter interact with the environment directly. It gives a, us a better outcome than a previous model framework. The second advantage of the RL is that it, has, it, it is less dependent on real data, it has this kind of self-learning ability. So if we tell the model, the, the algorithm itself about the rules of our uh, target problem, then it can play. Uh, it, can, it, it can play in this rule and get the generate the new data. A very well-known example is AlphaGo, right? AlphaGo is that we can uh, give the algorithm the RL model, existing data, and more importantly, based on the rule, the RL model can generate new data and more powerful data, uh, give, gives us uh, overall optimal solution rather than a local solution, okay? So this kind of self-learning ability is also very, very important for many transport problems, especially some new problem new technology that does not exist in practice. For example, autonomous driving. 
or the planning of a new city. We don't have any existing data for the congestion level of this new city. We know that in China, there is 1,000 year initiative, which is Xiong'an uh, New District. So everything in Xiong'an is new. We are building a complete mega city from, from the ground, from nothing, okay? So how to get new data for the autonomous driving in Xiong'an District? It's a mission impossible if we use previous machine learning uh, algorithms. But if we define the rule and we develop a sophisticated traffic simulation tool like the traffic simulation 4.0, I mentioned all these uh, new features, advanced functions. Then this kind of RL model can generate the new data, uh, generate the, the, the necessary data for our uh, simulation. So that's another advantage of RL. Well, the third advantage of RL, very important, is uh, the try error. Try error is very important, especially for a new technology with, a, with no clear pathway. For example, CAV or V2X or this kind of uh, 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 frontier traffic technology, we want to develop things in the future. So for this kind of problem, if we do the experiment in practice, it's very expensive. RL is very suitable for those problems with low error tolerance level. So if we want to develop the driving rules of a CAV, autonomous vehicle, we need to crush a lot of, maybe thousands of different vehicles. So the, the cost is very expensive because one CAV is much more expensive than a normal car, maybe 10 times or 20 times more expensive. So how to deal with this kind of new technology and which is a, uh, uh, ha has low error tolerance level, simulation is a very, very important tool. So in the simulation, we can do all kinds of extreme experiments. We let the vehicle have some kind of very severe accident, a, a big crash between the vehicle and infrastructure. Even a big crash and severe accident became between vehicle and the human being, okay, the travelers. So if we use RL, then it can give us all the necessary information for our try error are very, very important for the development of CV. I know that DD is developing the autonom autonomous uh, uh, taxi for, for our future, uh, future, future function. So it's very, very important to train our autonomous taxi in this R RL simulation environment. Okay, the last part is a high scalability and the flexibility. So RL actually defined some kind of very fundamental rule and then it let the software, the model to, to, to uh, test and run itself to uh, cover about a different situation. So if we train a RL model in one particular city, it's very, very easy to just transfer this well-trained model to another city. Uh, it's more like the idea uh, of transport learning, uh, transport learning. So high flexibility makes it uh, very important for the analysis of complicated urban transport system. If we train an RL model, for example, for traffic signal control, and then the same framework can be easily transferred to another problem with the rep metering. So the only difference between traffic signal and the rep metering is because it has a different definition on the uh, cost, on the, on the state, uh, on the actions. So if we slightly change these rules, then we can move the same framework from one problem to another problem. problem. That is another advantage. Okay, we talk about the merits of RL. So we are, are uh, aiming at developing traffic simulation 4.0. For RL, when we talk about the model, actually the model itself is not the most important ingredient, at least to me. The most important thing is how to accurately define and describe the environment 
So the simulation itself, especially for complicated complicated problem like urban transport modeling, the simulation itself is very very important. So we need to find or uh, to develop uh, uh, advanced uh, simulation. So how to deal with traffic simulation 4.0? Our research team have compared all the existing software packages. We compared more than 30 different packages, and we want to find a, a suitable simulation platform for the 4.0. So we, we, we know the limitation of the existing software packages, and we want to extend the current software into the 4.0. So based on the comparison, we find that Sumo is the most ideal uh, platform for our research aim because it has all this kind of uh, advantages. Uh, it's open source. It can handle large scale road network. It integrate the macroscopic and the microscopic. So we take Sumo as our uh, platform. It's more like an operating system for us. And then we incorporate RL into Sumo uh, to extend it to a traffic simulation 4.0. Okay, so the reason we choose Sumo is because, as I said, open source, easy to integrate uh, with AI technologies. It's very user-friendly because it has this Python-based Tracy interface. So we can easily call uh, existing libraries or uh, existing uh, APIs like TensorFlow in the Tracy interface in Sumo. Okay. That's a very, very important ingredient. Another important ingredient is that it supports multimodal travel. So in Sumo itself, it has 25 different vehicle models. It has more than 10 different types of traffic flow models, uh, uh, micro level traffic flow models. So it gives you the flexibility to define your own research environment. If you are, uh, facing a CAV analysis in urban area, for example, autonomous taxi in an urban area, you want to use a very complicated RL model for your study, then you have very good flexibility to choose the model you need. Okay, this is another advantage why we choose Sumo. So combine all these ingredients together, it gives us the clear plan for traffic simulation 4.0. Uh, I term it as a multimodal agent-based simulation plus uh, incorporate uh, reinforcement learning. So just a new trend, just a new technology. Uh, why is this 4.0 is different with previous one, two, three generation? So advantage of traffic simulation 4.0, I also summarize about some key parts. So number one important issue is that it is capable of accommodating highly complex endogenous and environmental factors. Very, very important. Okay. Previous study, we see that some state of self software package is used for simulation, but a very awkward simulation currently for transport modeler is that our outcome is not accurate. So compare with other types of simulation, for example, the hydrodynamic simulation, uh, the simulation of construction of buildings. Their simulation outcome is very, very accurate compared with the practical data, compared with the benchmark ground truth. But traffic simulation, all the existing 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, the outcome is not accurate. Why is not accurate? A very, very important reason behind it is because it's not able to handle all the endogenous and the environmental factors. You need to either sacrifice or compromise the accuracy or compromise the study area, the scale. So we need to combine all these ingredients together, all these endogenous and the environmental factors into consideration. Another merit of traffic simulation is that heterogeneity. Heterogeneity is very, very important because people are complicated. People are much more complicated than water, than electricity, 
than the cyber network itself. So every driver actually has a, a unique model for their traveling, for their uh, choice, either the destination or travel mode, uh, or uh, so on and so forth. This kind of decision makes every particular user different. So for our simulation software, it should be heterogeneous. A homogeneous model like the existing simulation is not able to accommodate all these complicated features. For example, in the existing traditional simulation, the movement of every vehicle, we just define a distribution, a random distribution. And then the movement of every vehicle, we just sample a pseudo random number from the distribution. It's problematic, okay? We analyze about the movement of every vehicle. It should has the uh, unique features. So heterogeneity is very important in the new generation simulation with RL and it is the uh, advantage of RL because in RL we can define agents for different users. Uh, each agent is a unique model. Okay, the third part is memory. So a very important feature of the travelers in urban area is because it's affected by their previous memory. We talk about the equilibrium in urban area. Why there is an equilibrium? Because people adjust their road choice plan based on their memory. So if we build a new city, we know that there will be an equilibrium for the traffic flow, but after a certain period, maybe after three months, maybe after six months. Why? Because in between, people need three months to adjust their road choice decision. So you find a pass randomly in the first day, and you find that it's not the shortest pass. So you have the motivation to switch to another route and based on a day-by-day -day adjustment. So during this period, we also have another modeling, uh, modeling framework with the day-to-day -day dynamics. So we analyze about the change of traffic flow towards the equilibrium. So why we can have an equilibrium? As I did, as I introduced, is because people has memory. So in our model, we must we must be able to handle the memory itself. But existing models, as I said, it only use a random distribution to uh, generalize all the the changes of all the users. It does not have the memory. It cannot handle the, the memory uh, ingredient. So just another merit of 4.0 and RL. Okay, so we talk about the combination between uh, RL and the traffic simulation and why we need RL. I think that I tried to answer this question and what has the domain knowledge in transport system analysis and how, how come RL can solve this kind of problem uh, in the uh, transport area. Okay, the last part of my presentation today, I would like to share with you the framework for the multimodal agent-based transport simulation. So based on our discussion, we know that there are already many existing research themes in transport area. There are already many complicated problems and systems in the existing urban area. And no mention that we are confronted by uh, the newly developed CAV and V2X, all these kind of new technologies. So a lot of changes. And if they combine together, it becomes even more complicated. So that's why we need RL because existing model is now already not accurate for one particular problem. No mention combine all these different problems together. So they are not able to handle the uh, analysis. We need RL. So I developed the uh, framework uh, like this. Uh, my PhD student, Lu Cheng, is also here with us. Uh, Lu Cheng helped me to develop this uh, together with my uh, research team. Well, we can see that there are some clear research themes in the 
urban transport uh, analysis, a uh, multimodal transport analysis. Uh, one part is urban area, one part is on the expressway. So it basically has this bi-level framework. So first level, what we call it the lower level, is focused on the users, the, drive, the, the travelers, drivers, uh, uh, ride sourcing operators, okay? And the upper level, the second level, is focused on the traffic manager. So land transport authority, you want to control the traffic operation. You want to manage travel demand, you know, how to deal with the system to achieve a system optimum. Uh, so we, we build this framework. We can see that many parts here are quite, quite suitable for RL. For example, in urban area, the choices of travelers. We know that RL actually is not only a description or hypothesis of existing data. It's more like op op optimization tool. So it can help you to, to get the optimal solution. For travelers, it has optimal choices. For the managers, it, has, uh, it gives you the optimal policy. So the choices in the lower level towards users, the choice of mode, rules, and towards the CAV, the driving rules, uh, the interaction between CAV and the human driving vehicles, uh, the uh, combined traffic flow. So all these kind of problem are very suitable for IL. And no mention the travel demand side, all the demand management policy, uh, including the rapid metering, signal control, variable speed determination are very, very suitable for IL. So this is a whole framework for the development. So what has a domain knowledge? A very important domain knowledge is that we need to uh, make sure what are the decision-making procedure in urban travel, uh, urban transport analysis. When we discuss with the problem with uh, many AI experts, uh, especially the reinforcement learning expert, we see that they are always stuck in some particular problem. For example, they are stuck in the uh, traffic signal control. They're stuck in the movement of one vehicle, movement of CAV. But these problems actually are only maybe one tenth or one twentieth of the overall research theme, overall challenges of urban transport simulation. So we need to have a, a clear roadmap. So here, I, I'm trying my best to give you a snapshot of the overall domain knowledge. So what are the decision making pr process in urban transport analysis? So based on a clear snapshot, then we can develop, develop a more suitable RL model that is able to handle all the transport ingredients. Why we need this? Why a hol holistic study framework is important? Because every ingredient in urban transport area are connected together. If we make small change on the right sourcing, it will affect some other people, maybe our neighbor, okay, who are taking public transport, taking buses every day, because right sourcing has this change. He or she want to switch to right sourcing. So it changed every different subsystem of transport area. So if your RL model want to really handle the problem, you need to have a correct uh, map, a correct snapshot uh, about the, all the uh, ingredient. Uh, okay, so that's my idea here. So what are the decision making process? When we talk about the choices of users, uh, so I said there are two different levels. One is a user, one is a manager. So for the users, very, very important decision making process include four parts, which are the four choices. Number one, destination choice. If I want to go shopping to a supermarket, so which supermarket? I have maybe 10 different choices. Okay, so which one uh, is suitable for me? In the simulation, it should 
be able to answer this question for all these 10 million people in Beijing traveling within a particular day. Okay. Departure time twice. So if I want, I, I, I decide my destination already. So at what time should I hit the road? 8 a.m., 9 a.m., so departure time choice, very important because it uh, affects the overall impedance level of the transform network. The third one is travel mode choice. I already decided my destination and departure time, so which travel mode, right sourcing or shared by bikes, so travel mode. And the last one is rule choice, even more complicated. So only after we combine all these choices, these choices are equally important for the uh, for the users and also for the transport system. Only after we combine all these ingredients, we can get an accurate description of the practical world. Okay, so for the choices, more choice and root choice, especially we can define a clear uh, RL model. I'm gonna. I'm not going to the uh, details. If you are interested, we can discuss about this later. Okay. We define this, and uh, my research team already finished the experiment, and uh, it turns out the outcome of the RL is very good for this particular problem compared with the existing methods. Okay. Another thing is about the second level, upper level for traffic control and management. So what has a decision making process? Here I mentioned about four different decision making process. We have traffic signal control, variable speed limit, and ramp metering. I shall say that traffic signal control, if we dig into the literature, we may find that more than 90% of the published papers in reinforcement learning in transport is focused on traffic signal. But actually traffic signal is only one fourth or one fifth of all the traffic control and the management policies. Why? I think the reason behind it is because most of the AI experts, they, they have better knowledge about traffic signal because we see traffic signal every day in every city. But road pricing, congestion pricing, is not implemented in every city. So we don't have the domain knowledge. We don't see its uh, existence, but it's very important. When we talk about demand management, things like congestion pricing, parking management, variable speed control, or variable uh, lane. So this kind of ingredient are even more important than the traffic signal control. So we need to consider about this other domain knowledge or this other uh, research tools uh, into our RL modeling. And they are very important uh, for the uh, traffic simulation for part zero. Okay, so we also develop RL model for traffic control and management. As I said, for signal control, there are already uh, many good papers. So we, we see that the AI expert has uh, already uh, consider the frontier RM model into consideration uh, in, into these problems. So yeah, the last part of my presentation is that we want to develop a new traffic simulation software which is uh, termed as a traffic simulation 4.0 for all kinds of urban transport analysis. Of course, it includes red sourcing. We want to incorporate RL into consideration. And we found that RL is very necessary. Maybe our uh, only path to, to deal with this complicated uh, environment. So in the end, how to combine all these ingredients together that we already developed uh, a tool which is uh, known as a transport digital twin platform. So after we consider all this sophisticated models or this complicated ingredient into our analysis. In the end, it comes to another term, which is digital twin. So itself has this function to describe, to accurately reflect the practical situations. It is a digital twin. 
So we developed this digital twin platform in Nanjing, and it's targeted as an underground city. So for the development underground city, we need to analyze about multimodal travel modes, uh, uh, include the, uh, the, 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 the vehicles and the, the subway, okay, and the pedestrian moving. So all these kind of travel modes are incorporated and also it includes uh, big data. So all kinds of data we can collect it in urban area are used for the analysis. So in the end, for traffic simulation, we should provide the policy maker some very clear and vivid tool like a digital twin for our analysis. Okay, that's all I have prepared. Thank you. Thank you for the impressive lecture given by Professor, Professor Liu. Uh, so uh, are there any questions to the lecture today on the urban transport si simulations supported by reinforcement learning? Uh, I'm not sure whether the audience can, uh, muted. Maybe you can type your questions in the Q&A button on the bottom bar of Zoom. Uh, and I will start by two questions. Uh, my first first question is that uh, there are already many applications of reinforcement learning in transportation, uh, such as the uh, uh, traffic control optimization. So what are the differences between the proposed framework with, uh, their, with their methods? Okay, uh, thank you, Li Cheng. Uh, Li Cheng is my ongoing PhD student. So any other audience, if you have questions or if you are interested with uh, uh, comments today and you have some comments you can directly open the mic and we can discuss together. Li Xiong has raised a very good question. Actually this uh, number one important question we considered when we develop our new RL framework. I think I can give you a very clear answer is uh, integration. So previous studies on reinforcement learning in transport area mostly focus on on one particular subsystem or sub problem. For example, traffic signal control. When we are doing this in the existing paper, most of the papers, they do not consider about the OD demand. They do not consider about the change of the signal control, their effect to the root choice. The so travel demand is like floating water. So if you make a traffic signal control better, this route maybe is, is less congested. So some more people will switch their route choice. This particular road. So my point here is that when we consider about a particular problem in urban transport area, we need to make sure that they are not isolated. So the newly developed reinforcement learning framework is that it can integrate all these different unnecessary ingredients and subsystem together and to make our RL environment more practical, more accurate. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, and my second question is that uh, can current computational power support the city scale simulation uh, which involves millions of agents. Well, uh, I think you're talking about the computational power. Well, uh, I discussed with, with uh, many RL experts in computer science regarding the practical implementation of RL. They have already developed very sophisticated and advanced uh, RL model for the autonomous vehicles uh, for some other research topic like hydrodynamics. But when we talk about practical implementation, a very important challenge we are confronted is a scale, is a large scale. For example, in urban area, if we use RL to analyze the root choice of one particular user, no problem, uh, we, we can, uh, analyze about 
every moment of this particular, uh, particular user. But consider the overall traveling area, which is, a, for example, Beijing city, which has tens of millions of people traveling together and they affect, interact with each other. So if you want to develop tens of thousands agents or tens of thousands different IR models, because different types of, of people may have different, very different features. We may need to use a different RM model for each particular user group. Definitely it's not, it, it, it's, it's beyond our acceptance in terms of computational power. So how to deal with this kind of problem? I think that as a particular, uh, as a current situation, we need to consider about two pathways. The first pathway is that we need to cluster the users, aggregate tens of thousands, tens of millions of people into maybe 100 or 200 groups and then define one agent to represent this particular group. And behind this agent, there are how many? Hundreds of thousands of people. Okay, this is one pathway. Another pathway is that we should try to uh, take use of the computational power. For example, we need to, to develop some parallel computing methods for the uh, calculation of our uh, model. Uh, we need to take use uh, the GPU, uh, develop some, some kind of, for example, uh, map reducing or the ADMM algorithm, which is suitable for the GPU calculation. So I think these two possibly are very important for the research of computational power in RL. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and there are two questions in the Q and A um, in the Q and A panel. Uh, the first question is: uh, Are you using the uh, reinforcement learning to control the signal? to control the traffic signal and vehicles. Uh, that is, you, by con controlling the traffic signal and uh, you can determine whether to whether the vehicle should accelerate or decelerate or uh, change the line. Yeah, uh, very good question. Yes, we use different agents to describe the movement of uh, different vehicles. And also we use different agent or even different RL model for different subsystem. So for root choice of the users, we use one type of RL model, maybe a DQN or maybe a, a Marco chain related, a more advanced uh, RL model. And we use a, 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 another model for, for, uh, for, for maybe uh, the, the, the road pricing, or some other kind of management tools. So we need to make sure that what are the tasks of RL? What are the tasks of simulation? So the question you raise that actually some of the tasks are not, should not be handled by the RL model itself. It should be handled by the simulation. For example, the movement of a human driving vehicle, uh, not an autonomous drive, drive uh, not a CAV, because for human driving vehicle, we already have many uh, advanced traffic flow model, micro level traffic flow, flow model, which are car following model or lane changing model. So we can just define the movement of these vehicles in the simulation and the simulation will feedback to the RL model regarding their movement. But for CAV it's another story because CAV there's no, there's not sufficient data to define the rule and it's CAV it can be easily controlled by the background algorithm. There's no existing theory to, to define the movement of CAV. So we need to use RL to first see what is the best decision for CAV and how to control a platoon of CAV. So after we get a RL model, after we use RL to describe CAV and in the end we can have a, a, a more aggregated model for the CAV, then we can change it to move it to the simulation, just let the simulation to do the work. Okay, that's the answer for this question. Thank you, it's a very good question. 
Okay, thank you. Yes. Yeah. So Richard, I can read actually from my monitor. Uh, okay. There are several questions. I don't know whether we have enough time for all these questions, but I can read it directly. So the other question is uh, whether you assume all agents such as private car owners will follow the learn IL policy for their personal choice, including destination or return if true. This is a reasonable concern. Most people will not actually learn some policy by themselves in reality. Yeah, a very good uh, issue is that people follow the majority. So for a new agent, if we already have some kind of well-trained rule, so we don't need to train a new model, a same model for this new agent. We can directly use our existing outcomes of the RL model. So yes, we in future, I think we will do this. And also for some particular um, problem, we are facing only one agent or only one user. For example, the, uh, the navigation system, the digital map, if you want to choose the, the optimal route for your user, you only provide the optimum for one particular user. So it's, it's different with the traffic assignment problem we analyze in the existing transport academia. So we want to, and to take thousands of millions of people into consideration rather than only serve, uh, only support one particular user. So I agree with that your idea, thank you. So the next one is, in other words, you're training the agent in a scene, whether a human driving a car and a self driving car as a same. Yes, we can, yeah. Uh, I think for different problem, we need to define the RL and the simulation environment um, differently. So if we are confronting the existing urban travel environment for our right sourcing. You know, DD this year's KDD, uh, we participated in the question raised by DD, which is the uh, uh, management of the, 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 the uh, team, right? So we call the drivers. So for this kind of problem, there's no CAV. CAV is, a, is still a myth in urban area. We don't know whether 10 years or 20 years, we can realize uh, uh, urban travel environment with a lot of CAV. So we talk about the money, uh, market penetration of CAV. There will be a very long period from current 0% to maybe 80% or even 100%. So there will be a very long procedure. We're talking about uh, very far in, in, in the future. But for the current analysis in urban area, we need a zero CAV vehicle environment. So for this kind of problem, definitely in our uh, RL simulation model, we do not consider about the, the, the self-driving car. But for the many important research in express, expressway study, and especially for the training method of CAV, CAV of course is a main task so we need to consider about the V2X, V2I. We need to consider about the cloud computing and uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the decision making of CAV vehicles. So my answer here in short is that it's case by case and you need to develop a different RL environment for different research themes. The next question is why is the evaluation criteria or what is the evaluation criteria for the whole system? In other words, how to measure the performance of optimal policy after update? Yeah, very, very good question. I think it takes me about two years to clearly understand about the logic behind this question. That is a logic behind the bad level model. So if you dig into the transport modeling, you, you see there's a big research theme, which is a game theory in transport modeling. In game theory, we use a, um, Nash equilibrium for users' root choice. And we use a Stackberg game for the bilevel modeling. So as long as we have the standpoint of bilevel, we clearly understand the evaluation criteria behind the RL model. 
as I said, there are two different levels. So if we talk about the evaluation criteria for the lower level, which are the users, so in, for uh, a, a, a transport operator like DD, red sourcing operator like DD, our main task is actually the user level. So for user level, we see that user is selfish. Actually, we need to find an optimal solution for their, for his or her own benefit. So for example, we develop a DQN for the root choice problem in uh, urban area and the criteria and the reward function actually is whether the final solution by RL is the shortest pass. Or if we consider different ingredients for our travel impedance, whether that is the shortest one in terms of generalized cost. Okay, just for the lower level. But for the higher level, the government, we always say that the user as users are selfish, but the government are, 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 are uh, reasonable. So the government, when they make the traffic control or demand management rules, they always target at a system optimum level. So if we want to define the signal control, you know that signal control is a last step for transport management. So if you optimize operation of one particular operation, your traffic performance may not be improved, maybe even worse. Why? Because other, some other people who are not driving may think that, okay, now the uh, drive, uh, drive, driving is more smooth. So let's change to drive, okay? So demand is much higher. So for the transport operator, the authority, their criteria must be the overall system optimum. They want to, they need to calculate the overall system travel time and the user benefit of all the Beijing travelers in a particular day as their evaluation criteria. Okay. So the next question is, do you use Tracy to communicate with Sumo? Tracy use Socket to connect with Sumo. It costs lots of time. How do you solve this? If, <laughs> that's a very good question. And I think that's a question for my PhD students. <laughs> Li Cheng is here. And, uh, some other students are more familiar with Tracy than myself. So yes, we use Tracy, and yes, it costs lots of time. So the answer here is that you can either change the um, more background functions of Sumo itself, which is uh, very time consuming. Uh, it's not recommended for a new researcher or for a team who is new in this area. This is one pathway. Another pathway is that you should allow your RL model to have some kind of time delay. So for transport analysis, we have different level of problem. Some problem has very good tolerance on the time delay. For example, the planning level problem. We, I want to determine using my RL model whether I should expand the current lane, whether I should build a new, uh, uh, new, new route a new road, okay? So this kind of planning level problem, it has very good tolerance on the uh, uh, loss of time. But for some other problems, like the traffic operation, especially for traffic signal control, we need to count seconds. So if your Tracy operation already spent me million, uh, minutes of time, then how could I estimate the traffic operation in next five seconds. Uh, that's uh, definitely a, 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 a disaster here. So how to deal with this? I think that, yes, you have to compromise some part of your accuracy. You need to give this kind of problem to the environment, to the simulation itself. So your RL should make decisions only on the platoon, on the uh, a, 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 a problem with better tolerance on the loss of time. So that's my, uh, suggestion you need to take a balance between the instantaneous uh, uh, decision making problem and the accuracy level. Uh, thank you. I see that uh, our this friend Bo Chen has another question. Uh, what are the operation space and the action space of agent, for example, the so traffic light and the CV? 
Uh, well, Lu Cheng, if you, you like, you can provide some feedback. I can first give a, a summary on this problem, and Lu Cheng, uh, please provide some more details. Well, for the observation space and action space, actually, a very, very important um, viewpoint is that you need to think from the, the perspective of the users. You need to think from the pers perspective of practice rather a mathematical way of thinking. I attend a lot of PhD oral defense or seminar in some other department, for example, in school of mathematics, in the school of computing. I see that many other uh, experts are doing transport problem, but very, very risky and problematic because they only define the variable itself. They do not think from the perspective of the users. One example, one researcher is doing a RL model for traffic signal coordination. That means we need to coordinate two different or even more different signal, <coughs> traffic signal variables, <coughs> two intersections or even a corridor, 10 different signal, traffic signals. So they define the space, they define the variables, and they let the variables change and do all this complicated calculation. I just ask one question. How do you define the platoon from the upstream intersection to the downstream intersection? Because the traffic movement has its own physical law. You change the traffic signal to green, of uh, in the upstream intersection, then the traffic, the, the platoon, uh, the, the team of vehicle will move towards the downstream intersection. It has a speed, it has a physical law. So if you do not consider about the platoon movement, you do not consider about this physical law, definitely your RL model will be highly risky, will be useless. So results you analyze when you put it into practical comparison, you may find that its error is even higher than 50%. Uh, existing models just use some economics assumption. The outcome of their equilibrium final optimal solution, the error is even 200%. So what is the use of this kind of model? It's useless, okay? So try to think from the perspective of the user. When you partition, the decision making process of the user into different variables, then you will clearly see the space and the action space. So you, you may find that when the people are making the rule choice decision, their action space is a, the, uh, the roots they are uh, confronting, they, they have the roots, the options they have, okay? And the action space is a, which route, uh, the, the action is which, which route I can I can select. And the final reward is if you select this route, what is the final travel cost for this problem? Okay, so that's the uh, brief answer for this problem. Richard, do you have anything to add up? Uh, well, uh, to define the observation space, uh, we need first to consider how the data is collected. Since we uh, since we really expect that our model is more compliant, uh, is more uh, more comp with more compliance to the reality. Uh, uh, in reality, um, we often use the license plate recognition system to capture the uh, traffic data in uh, in cities. Uh, so. Uh, the data that can be collected by this system uh, is how many vehicles are there in uh, uh, in, a, in, in an intersection at each uh, at each uh, time time period. Uh, so uh, so for to define the observation space of the traffic light uh, control, uh, several possible. Uh, Variables that can be added in the observation space is uh, the queue length and vehicle type composition and volume on each lane of each entrance of the intersection. Uh, for regarding the action space, uh, uh, the definition is quite simple. That is just uh, the green time and uh, 
the time of each phase of the signal uh, on each direction of the intersection. And th this is my answer. Okay, uh, thank you, Li Cheng. Well, our friend Bo Chang has raised many questions. I think that for the interest of time, Bo Chang, if you like, you can uh, send me an email later. We can discuss about this detailed problem. If you see the my share monitor again, you can see my email address here. So uh, please send me an e email for the other question. I think I think most of the questions are technical details. We have already uh, finished the RL model for root choice, more choice for traffic signal for subway models. So we combine these things together in our newly developed uh, stuff, developed sumo platform. So the outcome of this problem and also the detail, technical details of these problems are already quite clear. So if you are interested, we can talk about this later. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think uh, finally we thank Professor Liu for the wonderful talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that's the end of the day. We'll call that end. <laughs> thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you. See you. <laughs>